As most of us in Australia should know by now, thanks to an abundance of government measures to keep property prices artificially high, Australia's house price index far outstrips the CPI household inflation. Every year it becomes harder and harder for people to afford housing, which I think is absolutely disgraceful. And as a society, we shouldn't allow this. Housing is a social necessity. It shouldn't be treated like the dominion of rich men only. As we can see in this graph, household inflation fell in the June quarter by almost 2%, hammered obviously by lockdowns and so on, but it came bouncing back in the most recent quarter with a quarterly increase of 1.6%. So over the 12 months to the September 2020 quarter, CPI rose 0.7%, which kind of hides the underlying situation. Delving deeper, the price of food and beverages has increased significantly by 3.4% over the last 12 months. Alcohol and tobacco has really gone up, rising 8.1%. Transport and communication went down significantly with falls of 4% and 3.3% respectively, obviously heavily affected by government sanctioned lockdowns. But here's the surprising figure. Well, not so surprising if you understand our broken system. Housing went down by 0.2%, which is just a complete lie, or more accurately, a major piece of disinformation. I've spoken about this before in other videos. This number only represents the cost of new dwellings, but not the actual land they sit on. This figure literally only covers the physical materials and labour costs of building a new house, and specifically does not include established dwellings. It's a bit of a scam statistic in my opinion, hence why house prices almost always outstrip inflation. It's a con job that the Australian people just ignorantly accept. Now why am I talking about CPI and inflation? Because wage growth is directly affected by inflation. So if official inflation figures are only 0.7%, well, people won't have much negotiating power to increase their wages. And that's exactly what's happening. Australia experiences slowest rate of wages growth on record. Australian wages have experienced their most sluggish annual growth on record as the pandemic continues to see businesses shy away from increasing their workers' pay. The Australian Bureau of Statistics Wage Price Index found the average worker's wage increased at the snail's pace of 0.1% over the September quarter, the weakest climb in recorded history. It seems strange then, doesn't it, that house prices are still rising dramatically. People can't afford them, but the system has been designed to keep those prices rising. It probably comes as little surprise that the wages of public servants grew significantly more than that of the private sector. Private sector wages grew by 0.1% in the June quarter, while the public sector grew 0.8%. The Australian government don't want this discrepancy to continue. Public servants pay to be linked to private sector wages. And here's a more honest appraisal. Australian policy makers don't want higher wages. One thing that could improve the low wage situation is for the federal government to help spur wages growth by lifting its 2% annual wage growth cap. The government instead announced that Commonwealth public sector wage rises can no longer exceed wage rises in the private sector. Ludicrously, the government argues this will allow public sector wage rises to follow the private sector wage growth when it eventually exceeds 2%. And yet such a move will actually serve to reduce the likelihood for private sector wages to grow at that level because public sector wages help drive those in the private sector. And so in the midst of a recession, at a time when wages are growing slower than ever before and the jobs are increasingly becoming part-time and insecure, the government is working to keep such conditions in place. The government is using the pandemic to lock in low wages and insecure work. It means there exists a very real danger that when our economy does eventually recover, it will be much worse for workers. So yeah, in Australia, we have a government who are actively trying to increase house prices, but simultaneously also trying to cut our wages. It's a lose-lose situation for the Australian public at large. Domain tried to answer the question, why are house prices rising when wage growth is low and unemployment is still high? 
It should be noted that Domain are in the business of selling houses, so anything they say is going to be skewed to reinforce the notion that high house prices are good. So I'll answer the question for you as honestly as I can. Why are house prices rising when wage growth is low and unemployment is still high? Because the system is rigged. 